Hey folks, welcome to episode 67 of our Road to Unicum. Today we review the AMX 5100. This is the tier 8 French tech tree heavy autoloader tank that leads up to the AMX 50B. And I'm reviewing this tank at the request of viewers and I want to thank Similar Observation and Rackety Man for their generous, uh, generous donations of gold to enable me to crew the 5100. It's been sitting in my garage for years but I haven't played in a long time. The 5100 was actually the first autoloader above tier 7 that I played so this was really the tank that I learned in and I was terrible in it when I first played it. I had like a 45% win rate over my first 100 battles. I didn't really understand how or when to use the gun because having an autoloader plays completely different from a single shot tank, um, especially in the case of an autoloader that has a six shell clip which takes in excess of 45 seconds to reload. So you have a major amount of downtime that needs to be carefully managed. And you know, people had asked me to review this tank. I actually I hadn't covered it in the previous 66 episodes, uh, but the, 60, the 5100 was regarded as a pretty solid tank prior to 2017, so prior to the introduction of the overpowered tier 8 premium heavy tanks that have overbuffed armor, as well as the introduction of overbuffed tech tree heavy tanks in tiers 8, 9, and 10. So the 5100 back in the day was regarded as a pretty effective or good tank, but you know the tanks around the meta has shifted, and so this tank isn't as strong relatively as it once was. So we're going to look at two battles here. Obviously, this is the tier 10 glacier. We're also going to look at a tier 8, all tier 8 steps battle. You can see even tiers. Now, the thing about playing the 5100 is it is a quote unquote support tank. And I know that is an often used term which is nebulous or often misinterpreted. There are a few things to know about the 5100. So, you know, like I said, it's got that massively long clip reload. Right? But it also has no armor and has good mobility. So you can get yourself into trouble, but because it is a heavy tank, it doesn't have the mechanics to spot for itself effectively. And part of that problem is, you know, if you get outspotted by tanks, they're going to have the first shot advantage of you, and the fact that you've got an autoloader really isn't meaningful. So notice, I went to the heavy brawling area, right? Because there's a lot of rocks and hardcover to work with. I don't want to go to the middle of the map because there are three arties, and this tank is squishy, and I'm liable to get ripped up by arty. But out on this side of the map, the Northwest Brawling area, until one side or the other wins it, you can largely stay pretty already safe. Now, what I was waiting for was other friendly tanks, in particular that 430U, to get ahead of me so he could be the one that spots. What you don't want to do in a 5100 is to go to locations where you don't know how many enemy tanks there are and where you are isolated. Because they know that once you've emptied your clip, they can push on you with impunity because you've got such a massive reload window. So the best way to leverage a tank like the 5100 is to stick around friendly tanks and support them. And late game, you can push on 1v1s against opposing tanks as long as you have the hit points to go ahead and now trade them. Now, you know, I have I love autoloaders, but I have talked about in other videos that I think the ideal clip size for an autoloader is between three to four shells. And the reason why, two reasons why. One, that gives you a pretty manageable clip reload, typically in the realm of, uh, say, somewhere between 18 to 34, 35 seconds, not, you know, 45 seconds, right? Um, and then also, realistically, in the vast majority of cases, you're not going to be able to fire six shells without eating multiple shots from your opponent. Now, I was spotted, and I am pretty exposed. Actually, from the, the perspective of that Udez, right, I could see his entire hull. He could only see part of my tank, but I don't want to hang out there too much because I was get getting shot at by uh, two different TDs. And notice, like, I'm there's like, since there is such a large clip reload window, it gives me the chance to kind of think about flexing. Where do I want to go? Where do what I, what I want to do? And as it turns out, R430U has pushed up meaningfully far enough. Actually, <laughs> I tried here. I didn't. It's so funny. You really should take time to explore the maps. I don't do it in team training partly because I'm just too lazy. If I were the ultimate min maxer and had disposable time, I would drive around at all the maps with friends and explore all the climbing areas. But you know, I play this game for fun. There's only a limit. Like I do, quote unquote, study the game and study new tanks and their armor layouts and their their statistics like penetration and accuracy, reload, etc. Uh, but there's only so much studying that I'm willing to do to a point. So you know, I, I think. The, you know, if you had the time and the interest, spending time in team training, driving around all the maps, getting a sense of where there's hard and soft cover, fields of vision, 
you know, getting a sense of all that is very, very useful. Uh, what I mostly just do is just learn by experimenting. And I, this is, there's an old saying, how you do something is how, how you do something is how you do, or how you do anything is how you do everything, right? And, you know, I'm a big learn by doing guy. You, you study enough to get a general idea, but there's no, you know, there's no replacement for experience. Now, because this does have a six shell autoloader, what you'll sometimes see me do is fire the first shell before I'm fully aimed in. Now, in some cases that can be wasteful. In other cases, I'm doing it because it compacts my burst. It lets me get the first shell out of there. And then in the time that I would pretty much normally be waiting to aim in for that first shell anyway, I'll be aiming in for the second shell. Now, you don't want to do this, obviously, if you need all six shells because your opponent, say, has in the you know range of 1800 hit points, but it does allow you to compact your burst a little bit. Uh, and so, you know, it's just something to think about. Now, obviously, I can push up with, you know, uh, a lot of confidence up here. This game is in the bag. I could close my eyes and we would still win this game. I could go AFK, whatever, right? But in this case, you know, the T49 is out in front of me spotting and, you know, he's going to grab the attention of whatever he sees first. This is very common with opposing players. In particular, I will say with players who camp or snipe who tend to have a lower awareness than the players who actually go to relevant areas of the map and they will tend to fixate on the first like fast tank whether that's a light or medium tank who's flanking them and so if you're an auto loader a lot of times you can then just pull up and you know fire on them just unload your clip so obviously this was a pretty you know one-sided affair but you know I want to emphasize in this tank especially when you are bottom tier you simply can't afford to spot. Any light tank or medium tank driver who's not a complete moron and has coded optics, and even if they don't, will outspot you for miles. Like, I, I've actually found it really frustrating with this tank. I could be sitting in or behind a bush facing a medium tank that is out in the open, and they'll outspot me. It's ridiculous, right? And so this tank, this heavy tank, even though some people, some people often, like, think of faster heavy tanks is kind of being like heaviums and so you, technically you could think of it in that role but this tank is 100% incapable of spotting right and it's the same reason why like when I emphasize for medium tanks almost every medium tank in the game except for a few tanks namely the E50 and E50M which are pretty heavily armored um, but for the vast majority of medium tanks you want to put camouflage on all four of your crew members because it greatly uh, not only increases your camouflage value but that has the effect of reducing your opponent's ability to spot you, right? And not getting spotted is all about not taking unnecessary damage and also getting that first shot opportunity, a first shot advantage, the one essay that I always talk about. You know, if there's any principle in this game that I would say is more important than anything else, it's one essay when you're talking about uh, fast, uh, fast tanks, whether it's a light medium or a fast heavy tank like this. Now, you know, this map was recently changed in steps. The main thing you need to be careful of, I still believe in pushing the 9-0 in the lane. I'm glad that our team is doing it. Our Ravitel Borsig was not paying attention. He's asking for help now, but it was pretty clear a while ago, right, that the deployment had shifted to the east, so that guy sitting out there by himself and asking for help, he should have repositioned because where he is is not a good position. Now, the main thing you need to be concerned about if you're pushing 9-0 line from either side is the sniper shelf. So our sniper shelf is where our, our Progetto 46 is. So that's over by the B7 area, B8 area, or B7 area in particular. And then they have a shelf which is right where our light tank is going up and over, our Batchat 12T, which is on the map at around F0. And so what I'll do uh, in either location, I'll knock down all those trees early so there's a massive row of bushes. Now you don't want to just knock over one tree because then they'll have a pretty good idea, a good idea it might be sitting behind it. But if there's like six trees all side by side all knocked down, that's a pretty broad expanse to kind of hide behind, right? Now I go I went ahead and clip reloaded because you know I want to try to you want to kind of go into engage combat as much as you can, at least with four shells in your clip, if not six. Like it's okay to go in with three or four shells to help finish someone off, but in this case you know, I, I really want to get back up to the six. Now, part of what they have, which can make it a little hard for us to push, is the fact that they've got a T28 directly to the south, right? The T28 prod is down by a J0, and they have a Scorpion at K0. And if those guys are smart, they'll stay alive and put in flanking fire. Because here's the thing. Our guys, our tanks can either head south on the zero lane, in which case we'll eat flanking fire from their T28, Projecto 46, and T26 E5, or our tanks can push along the G and H lanes, in which case we, our tanks will be susceptible to fire from the T28 prod and from the Scorpion. And that's why 
the K0 pivot point in particular is super powerful for holding a flank when the enemy team is pushed down on you. So I don't want to go down there. I'm too squishy to go out in the open. And I want to see if I can get some flanking fire on their tanks that might be in the middle of the map. So here, here's an example, right? So by moving to my right, which is toward the northwest, I now have full flanking fire on this Super Pershing. And because I know I had him tracked, I have an auto loader, I keep firing and a friendly player hits him even though he had de-rendered and gave me assist damage and then I finished him off. Okay, so three shots left in the clip. I'm gonna just go ahead and snapshot that first shot because I know the window where I might be able to fire on this VK is gonna be pretty limited and then he gets killed anyway. And this seems like a pretty good time since I'm not seeing anything to go ahead and think about reloading my clip. And again, it means you know I have 45 seconds of downtime where I can't engage in combat, but you know it does give me plenty of time to study the map and figure out you know where is the most logical place for me to be. Now. You know, it's possible we're going to lose the western side of the map. The Luva and the Progetto 46 could get out DPM. Uh, their T-34-2 has pushed pretty far up mid. So he's going to be able to spot our T-28 Prot and our Scorpion over along the sea lane. right? But since he spotted, what this allows me to do is to get into position where as soon as my clip is reloaded, I can pop up and hopefully get some flanking shots on that T-34-2. But, you know, I, obviously I'm not peeking over the ridge. Physically, I'm impossible to spot. Now he can spot me because I, I went ahead and show my turret. And then that first shot hits. And I'm only going to have a small window to go ahead and shoot him here because he's aware of me. And he, he correctly pulled back down so that he's not just hold down, he's turret down. And he's looking my direction. I need to be careful. Obviously, um, the hull and the turret armor on this tank are very weak. You should not count on it to bounce anything except very weak low penetration guns especially from lower tiers now that samua sm is in the open and so you know he's got very slow uh, traverse and also slow reverse speeds and i reviewed that tank and the mobility on that tank relative to this one is much poor as a matter of fact between these two tanks the samua has meaningful hull and turret armor not great armor but decent armor uh, but this tank is much faster and I found, to my surprise, given the current meta, I thought that I would probably prefer the Samu over the 5100, but I still prefer, I still love the speed of this particular tank and then having, you know, having those six shells to go ahead and put into your opponents. I, I should also mention, the one thing which, you know, has aged well for this tank is the fact that not only do the shots do 300 alpha each, which is pretty solid for an autoloader, it's not like those smaller 240s that you see from some of the like the Progetto 46 or which is an auto reloader or the you know uh, even, even like a tier 9 light tank auto loader like the 1390 uh, 240 damage per shot doesn't you know deliver, deliver a lot of punch but 300 is actually pretty meaningful uh, and then the other thing too is that the silver ammo penetration on this tank is 232 so you know you you can do pretty well and make good money just by using and by the way here like I'm very much like overexposing my tank against that Udez and Progetto 46. Obviously, normally you don't want to do that. I'm doing that just because I have the hit points to do it. I hadn't taken any damage. They're not going to kill me, uh, so I can just kind of fire on them with impunity. But the main thing about this tank, I think, is just managing just the extensive amount of downtime and being thoughtful about where you go, not spotting for yourself, but always putting yourself in a position where you can engage with tanks. And so, you know, it's kind of interesting to look, how did I do? after repurchasing, repurchasing this tank in this current, you know, over-armored meta. And in 20 battles, I was able to pull a 60% win rate solo, and even with 100% silver ammo and random battles, still getting almost 2100 damage per game over a spot and 2.2 kills. Now, keep in mind, I'm a, you know, vastly better player than I was when I first played the 5100 like three or four years ago, and I've got way more experience in terms of the game mechanics and also you know, how to play autoloaders, um, so that factors into it too. It's definitely still a finesse tank. Again, I want to thank uh, Similar Observation and Rackety Man uh, from Reddit who funded the gold to allow me to recruit this tank. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care.